This is the Shark X3. It's the cheapest gaming mouse with Pixar 3395 that I have seen and tried. But is the price and sensor enough to lure people into buying this? Let's find out. Let me say it again, it's the cheapest gaming mouse with Pixar 3395 that I have seen and tried. I get this gaming mouse for only 1749 pesos or around 31 US dollars. Here in the Philippines, it's sold as CPS Tech X3, but if you check it, it's still a Shark X3 because of the Saturn logo of the said brand placed on the left side. Since this is a budget gaming mouse, there's nothing special inside the box. You'll only see the user manual, the Type-C to Type-A cable, and lastly the gaming mouse itself. To me, this is fine and expected. One good feature of the gaming mouse is its weight. It only weighs 54 grams. It's 2 grams heavier than its advertised weight. I don't know how Attack Shark pulled it off, but the registered weight is really great in my opinion. Imagine a lightweight gaming mouse with the latest sensor and tri mode connection for just 1749 pesos or 31 US dollars. If you look closer, the X3 resembled the shape of G Pro X Super Lite. Now, if we compare them, Super Lite is longer. As for the height, they're pretty much the same. If you have the same hand size as mine, 18.5 cm, you'll be comfortable using the palm and fingertip grip styles. If you're a claw grip user and we have the same hand size, you'll be having a hard time using this gaming mouse. In my opinion, the shape and size of X3 is good. I don't feel any discomfort or my hand doesn't feel tired after long gaming sessions or after using this gaming mouse at work. So yeah, you heard it right, this gaming mouse has tri mode connection. You can switch the connections via the slider button found at the bottom. You can also see the indicator and instruction of the connection modes. The USB dongle for 2.4GHz connection can be also found at the bottom as well. So far in my tests, there's no latency in, in terms of connecting wirelessly. Aside from that, I like how soft the cable is. You can also use different Type-C cables on this gaming mouse because the port is not too enclosed. And just like other tri-mode gaming mice, the battery will charge when you plug the cable. The charging time of this gaming mouse is around 3 hours. When you charge the X3, you'll see the battery indicator turn purple. And when the battery is fully charged, the indicator will turn green. To be honest, I like the battery efficiency of the X3. With an average daily usage of 4 hours, the factory fresh battery lasted 44 hours in my testing. Well, the advertised uptime of the Attack Shark X3 is 200 hours. With a battery capacity of 300 mA, 200 hours is quite long to be honest. As of the making of this video, I haven't charged the mouse again since I charged it for the first time when the factory charge battery drained out. I think one of the reasons why this gaming mouse has a huge uptime is because there's no RGB lighting. The only lighting you'll see are the battery indicator, DPI indicator, and mode indicator. So for RGB lovers, you might want to consider this if you're targeting this gaming mouse. Like I said earlier, this gaming mouse has Pixar 3395 optical mouse sensor. If we're going to compare the performances of all gaming mice with Pixar 3395 that we have tried before, the Vanser Gemini Caster and Fantec Aria, I could say there are no major differences. Maybe there are some but they are barely noticeable. What I'm saying is, even if the X3 is a budget gaming mouse, the performance of the sensor is at par with the gaming mice that I have mentioned. Aside from that, I haven't encountered any major issues in terms of the sensor. No jittering and no spin outs so far. Upon checking online, there's no specific Attack Shark website to download the software. But upon searching the internet, I found a Reddit thread wherein some users shared the website where they were able to download the English version of X3's software. I was able to download it at manbadashnake.com. Inside the software, you can adjust the DPI with the increments of 200 and the lowest you can set is 50. You can also set the polling rate and LOD. The only thing missing in the software is the debounce time setting. It's not available and for some this might be concerning. As for the mouse feet, they installed PTFE mouse gates. They also added mouse gates surrounding the sensor. One good thing about the mouse feet of a Shark X3 is that they're replaceable. Also, the shape of the mouse feet of X3 seems like the same with the Pulsar's Super Glide skates. Unfortunately, I don't have the said skate so I can't compare them. So far, I have no complaints about the mouse feet of X3. Now if you check the clickers, the Attack Shark X3 is using Kale Black Mamba switches with 80 million click lifespan. I like the tactility of the switches and I don't feel any discomfort after diving into long gaming sessions. However, there's minimal pre-travel on both clickers. By the way, here's a quick sound test. The side buttons are not mushy and I also like the tactility, but the side buttons are a bit slippery because of their coating. 
Also, I have no information on what switches were used on the side buttons. The Attack Shark X3 has TTC encoder for the scroll wheel. The scrolling experience is good to be honest and I also like the tactility of it. But I don't like the rubber used because it attracts too much dust. As for the coating, my unit has matte white finish. It doesn't absorb sweat and dirt that much. It does feel slippery at times, so adding grip tapes might be ideal. However, I don't know if these are all the same with its black colorway. It might be different because of the paint used on the black variant. Build-wise, the X3 is quite good for its price to be honest. There are no flexing or creaking sounds. However, if you shake it, you'll hear some moving parts inside. So far in my 2 weeks of testing, I did not encounter any major issues. The implementation of the sensor on this gaming mouse is good and there are no jittering and no spinouts during my testing. Aside from that, I did not encounter the issue one user shared on the reddit thread I mentioned earlier. The issue is if you hold the caps lock button of your keyboard, the mouse will not work. I tried this one on both Mac and Windows but I did not encounter it. Overall, the performance of X3 is quite amazing to be honest. For a budget 3395 gaming mouse, it exceeded my expectations. I was expecting that it will be flimsy, have a lot of issues, and feels cheap. But it's the opposite. No issues as of the making of this video, it's not flimsy, and it doesn't feel cheap. Moreover, there are a lot of things I like about this gaming mouse. For example, the tactility of the switches and the ergonomics as well. I also like how battery efficient this gaming mouse is. But there are two things that I don't like about this gaming mouse. First are the stickers below the X3. It seems like they will peel off easily. I guess if they peel off, just replace them with aftermarket mouse gates. Second thing I wish I did not encounter are the shaking parts. Upon checking, these parts seem to be the DPI and connection mode buttons, but these are trivial concerns and I think will not be a major problem in the long run. Despite being a great mouse for its price, there's still a question in my mind that I cannot answer as of the moment. And that question is, will it last long? And that's it guys, we have reached the end part now. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Till our next, goodbye.